Getting diagnosed with SCAF scoliosis can understandably leave you feeling confused, even scared and obviously wondering what to do next. In this video, I want to show you some of the most important things that you need to know with SCAF scoliosis, especially if your doctor has just offered you the wait and see approach. Little disclaimer to begin with, this is not medical advice. This is for education purpose only. And I'm speaking from my own experience here. My name is Christine Jaregiberry. I'm a yoga and Pilates teacher and I've specialized in working with people with scoliosis for the last 10 years. So as somebody with scoliosis myself, and I have been diagnosed as a child, so the word scoliosis has been around me for, the, uh, for a very, very long time. I have done this whole journey and I know exactly how you feel. So please um, just keep in mind, you are not alone. So there are many, many people out there who might be feeling just as confused as you feel right now. So the most important piece of advice I can give you um, is educate yourself as much as you can. So ask all the questions. So obviously you're here, which is great, and, and you're already searching actively for answers. Ask your doctor um, for as much information as possible. Ask for your x-ray. There's nothing wrong with um, asking to have a copy of your x-ray. Ask how many degrees your scoliosis is. And this might all be a little bit easier if you are um, a, a young person, if you're not an adult yet, then uh, you might get a lot more help from health professionals as well. But just speaking from, from my own experience and working with people, I know once you're an adult, it's a little bit harder to, to get all this information. But this is why I'm here to encourage you as well to ask these questions and don't be um, afraid to uh, accept that there might be different answers from different people. So this is happening all the time, happened to me as well. And just see it as pieces of a puzzle that you are here to kind of put together to build up this overall picture and make a plan of how you can help yourself in the long term. So to help you gathering all of this information, I have created this little handy posture checklist, which you can download for free. You can go through all of these um, sections and hopefully that will give you some guidance about what questions you maybe have to ask and what information you need to be looking for. So what is an s curve scoliosis? It's obviously shaped like an S but just um, be aware that sometimes this is also called a reverse S-curve. So um, if you think about the shape and which way exactly it's going. And when we look at the shape of the spine, um, we always look from the back. So this is, again, this is important for you to know. The most common pattern is a right thoracic left lumbar curvature, just like it's here on my t-shirt as well and this is sometimes called a reverse s scoliosis so the other thing that we have to know apart from the fact that we have obviously two curvatures to deal with with an s curve scoliosis is that with age and the forces that gravity have on the body scoliosis can get worse so this is simply due to the shape of the spine and then the muscles around the spine starting to adjust. So on one side of the curvature, the muscles would start to get shorter and shorter. And on the other side, they will start to kind of lengthen more and also get tighter. So this is just something to keep in mind that the more we are in our scoliosis pattern, the body will adjust over time and you will start to kind of go more and more into the pattern if you don't do anything about it, of course. So the bad news is, unfortunately, idiopathic scoliosis. We don't know exactly where it's coming from and we cannot change the shape of the bones. But what we can do, and this is the good news, is we can change all the soft tissue and the muscles around the bones. So this is where we can really create change. So the great news is that exercise and movement can help us um, with this resetting of the muscles 
it can also help us to manage some symptoms of pain, for example. So you obviously want to take the advice and the guidance of your doctor about this, um, about what movements are maybe beneficial for you, what other treatments are maybe suggested. But speaking from my own experience, as an adult, very often it's the, well, let's just wait and see approach um, that is applied by health professionals. And this can be really frustrating, especially if you are dealing with pain. So we obviously know now that movement and exercise can help us, but we also want to make sure we do it in a right way because we don't want to make our S curve scoliosis worse and we don't have to we don't want to end up in more pain of course. So in this next video which is on your screen right now I'm going through some of my favorite yoga poses that are safe for S curve scoliosis and that can help you with your back pain.